It's your favorite show of your week, and we are back on your screens. Let's you know, Jesus interacted among them. He went with the tax collectors. He 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 went. He says, "Hey, except Zacchaeus, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy." <laughs> That began before the beginning began. He that will never end even if end was to end. Pride, you wiped away my tears. Very good. I cannot have any photo whatsoever. Therefore. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Art Embodiment Show, your favorite show of the week. And in the house today, we have got Edmund Chronic Billion. He's an author of about 10 books, and he actually launched two. And today, we just want to talk to him about his journey, how his journey has been and all that. And one of the books that we are going to be talking about today is, I want to see... President Edgar Longo. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just so happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it, it, I'm so happy. So to I, meet I, you always have, I always have this, this <laughs> kind of joy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how have you been? Uh, I've, yeah. I've been great. Yeah, how about you? You know, sometimes when I just think about the journey we have come from in my writing career, sometimes I just laugh. You know, when I'm looking at my books, how I started, it's just one of those things, but anyway, I'm happy to be to be on yeah, the show. Yeah, so uh, let's let's start <coughs> by by you. Like, can you kindly tell the viewers who you are? Okay, um, Edmund, Edmund, Chronic Billion, um, is a storytelling specialist. Okay, I, I just tell stories. I, I think that's that's what defines me. Yeah, I'm uh, actually a physiotherapy technologist as well, and I'm also um, a, a love coach. Okay, I, I talk about uh, relationships so much. Okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah I think that's, I think that's my, yeah, yeah, because you see, <laughs> yeah, because you know, one thing I've come to understand is that you, you can't do anything outside relationship. I mean, everything that you're going to do, there must be a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the more you're a boss, you find that, you know, you know me today, right? You're my friend. Yeah, it's true. Why? Yeah, Why? It's Why? Because, because a relationship, you get a point. So people don't understand the power that relationship, you know, uh, play in our lives. And, and this is one thing I always talk about. I've got three messages that I always preach, whether in my books, in my stories, because I'm, I'm, I'm always focused on children as well. I do a lot of stories for children and just a lot of outreach programs and activities for children. So I focus on love gratitude and forgiveness because I've come to understand that what the world needs is love like that's what we need yeah. you know you know I, I, I know you know what's happening in the country now you know, tribalism people are trying to rise up and I'm asking myself what is the love that I mean we are Christians and we are one Zambia one nation what is the love that we talk about you know so it's, it's one thing that I'm just trying to make people realize that look at we cannot achieve success we cannot get to a place where we want to be as Zambians, not just Zambians, but even Africans, if we don't love, if we don't forgive, you know. I tell people one thing, I say, look at, yeah, but if some people try to condemn me, man, yeah, you're talking about love, do you understand what love I said? Look at, one thing I've come to understand is that if, it's very easy for you to give without love, but it's not easy for you to fail to give if you have love. When I talk about giving, I'm not just talking about giving money, but I'm talking about giving the affect. You know, some people, what they need is not even the money. They just need your, your, your presence, you know. And this is a thing that I'm trying to do because, you see, I'm so passionate about relationship because relationship is everything to me. I, I, I'm always out there. You know, I'm not the kind of guy where, like, I'll be in my room, just, you know, closed up in my bedroom, home. I'm just focused. No, I, I always go out there. And I think this is something that has really helped me even to come up with a lot of ideas and, 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 and some of my stories people. People just uh, re re resonate with them and just relate to my stories. Why? Because I spend more time with people. Every single day I ask myself a question. I say, Edmund, how many people have you touched today? Uh, that's, that's how I live my life. Every day, if I've not talked to anybody, a stranger, I say, what have you done today? Whom have you made smile today? Mm. I think to me that, that's challenging me. You know, like every single day it makes me live my life like that because life is about making a difference in someone's life even talking about the yeah, same yeah, book yeah. that i'm talking about like yeah. i want to see ed galungu 
People say, but why do you want to see Edgar Longo? <laughs> I want to see Edgar Longo because, you know, it's about difference making. It's about difference. I, I, I'm not trying to be political. In this book, it's actually a novel, okay? Real life best novel, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so I'm not trying to be political here and there, but what I'm trying to say is that I want to see Edgar Longo. Why? Because I want to make a difference. I'll tell you one thing, and this is one thing you have to understand very critically. If you are a leader, people are going to criticize. If you are a leader, people are going to say all sorts kind of things. But one thing that matters to me, and I think it should also matter to other people, is that if I can talk to 10 people and maybe only one person feel touched and they feel like they can change by what I've just said, then I'm done. Yeah. The problem that we make most of the time is that, you know, the folks are going to say, Why are you cool? Why are you cool? Like, most of the time, we're going to talk Like, it doesn't just work like that. You get a point? Like, we're different. We are not born to solve every problem. Yeah. We are born to like solve set up. And this is, this is, it's your duty. You see, God's duty is to give you the gift. Your duty is to discover the gift. But what are we doing? It, it pains me a lot when I look around many youths, they're just playing, drinking alcohol, what? You guys, come on, you know, we, we, we need to stand up, we need to begin like, so, to discover. Uh, when, when, uh, <laughs> speaking of junkies, like how, how do you... <laughs> <laughs> how do you get to to yeah. those kind of people? Like it's how how do you get to talk to them and try and Im impact them in whichever way? It's, it's a challenge. But one thing I've, I've 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 noticed is that that has really helped with them. Is that you know if you if you're going to speak to those kind of guys, but tamanga varia, you have to speak their language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is one thing that has that has really helped me. But but I don't go with a book approach. If I go there, ah, I'm done. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to shut up. Ah, zona, zona. So I'm done. If you have a book with me, ah, if you have a book with that wedding, if you have a book with an IOA, I'm a book. I'm a book with a book with a book. You get a point. It's all like it's 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 all about you know like people. One thing I've noticed about these guys, the manga, the ego egos, and all that. It's like they just want to make quick cash and all that like that. But you see, the principle of money is that money comes where there is value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Money comes. This is one thing I've discovered in my life. Money comes when there's value, money comes where there's growth. So when you focus on developing your value and, and, and giving that value, money comes. You see, I tell people, you know, that success is not to be pursued, but success is to be attracted by the people that we become. So there's a way you're supposed to become for you to attract success. There's a, way, there's, there's a way you're supposed to become. This is why I'm so passionate about reading. I'm so grateful to mommy. And, 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 and I, I always tell, tell people about this because she made a good foundation of me to start reading at the tender age. I started school when I was two years old. Oh, wow. I, I knew how to write my name when I was five. I could write my own name. I could even read some few words. So she, she ensured that every single day I'm reading something. Every single day. So that has been, I read a book one day. I read one book per day. And I've been doing that for some time. <laughs> Every single day I read one book. So, so you see, to me what is important is growth. Am I growing? Every single day am I learning? Because see, the problem that we have in Zambia is that people don't want to learn. Like, you know, when I'm done with the grade 12, I will never touch a book again. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now the question is, how do you uh, tend to make mm. impact in people's life if you can't learn? Because the moment you stop learning, that's the moment you start dying. You start dying. And yeah. it's just like that. <laughs> you get a point. So we, we need to migrate from the mentality of thinking that, you see, things will just happen for the sake of happening. Things will just happen for the sake of happening. You have to go for it. You know, I, I, previously I was giving you an example. You know of, about what happened when I attended a certain workshop. You know, a man was talking about desire. Said he had a fifty quarter in his hand. Said, "Hey guys, I'm ready for fifty quarter. Never know any. Hey, shut." And the everyone was like, "Inne, inne." Everyone was lifting their hands. And he repeated, saying, "Guys, I'm ready for fifty quarter. Never know any." Everybody was like, "Inne, inne." The third time he said, "I'm ready for fifty quarter. Never know any." This guy stood up and he went for the money, and he gave them. And we just were like, "Oh my God! If you want something that bad, you have to do whatever it takes to go and get it." Yeah. I will tell you one thing. I used to travel when I was in grade 12. I used to travel, you know, about 14 miles to go to a library to read. People used to think I'm mad. Like, this guy, are you studying a course or something? I said, no, I don't go to read. You get the point. Like, just, you become so desirous of information. I just want to learn. And, and it has really helped me so much because even book writing, I think it's something that is just a walk away with me. You know, I, I can do a book in two hours. I can write a book in two hours. I can write a book a day. I can write a book in 24 hours. Why? Because 
There's so much information and everything. Like, I learn everything. To me, when I look at everything, it's a book. What we're doing here is a book. I can do a book here. Everything is a book. <laughs> you know, you get a point. So, <laughs> so now, uh, getting to your, to your book, I, I want to see uh, President Edgar Lund. What is the book all, all about? The book is a leadership book, okay? Story of um, uh, Gwen, okay? She's actually 15 years old. So her passion is that she wants to make a difference in her life. She wants to stand out. She wants to be different. She wants to create uncommon success and also inspire other people to do the same. So now, she, she wants to see Edgar Lungo because Edgar Lungo is one of those people who have just touched her life in a certain way that is so unusual. You get a point. Not that other people have not, but, but Edgar Lungo has just stood out and, and Edgar Lungo has set a very good um, uh, example that she can emulate. You get yeah. a point. So, so she, she wants to, and one of the things I've talked about, I've talked about you know, humility, I've talked about the, the heart of servanthood, I've talked about you know, uh, 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 tolerance. You know, you know, sometimes if you're a leader, you have to tolerate certain things. Yeah, yeah. It's not every, everything that you respond to, somebody insults you on Facebook, you respond, hey, what you want to do? You know, you imagine your president here doing that. You know, you get a point, somebody says, yeah, the president, you want to have a president, see what you can do. Hey, what you want to do? Come here, you can't be doing that. I mean, you get a point. So, so, they, I mean, being a leader, you have to, to begin to tolerate certain things, that's leadership. And it also shows maturity. And I've also talked about um, willingness to learn as well. Okay, you, you have to, 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 be, to be willing to learn because, Sometimes people think that leadership is about controlling people. It's not about controlling people. It's about working with people. Actually, being a leader is, is being a servant. Yeah, yeah, you get a point. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what the book is all about. If you look at the story, you know, because the way the story starts, you know, it starts with Gwen is dead. She died. That's how the story starts. <laughs> she died and she woke up. And when she woke up, the family like, Gwen! Oh, like they were having a funeral. So when they organized it, she just... She just woke up. Like, what? People thought it's a ghost. Like, hey, man, you guys, what's happening? What's happening? So Gwen was like, what? What's happening here, guys? You're trying to organize it. I'm not dead. They said, you're dead. You died. Like 30 minutes ago, you died. He said, I'm not dead, daddy. What's happening? Like, I had a dream. I was enjoying it. What, what dream was it all about? I, I, I was with Edgar Lungo. She had a vision. She had a dream. And she was with Edgar Lungo at the State House. They were having dinner with Edgar Lungo. And Edgar Lungo was teaching us stuff about leadership, stuff about, 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 about politics, stuff about how to be, you, you, you get a point? Yeah, yeah. So she, she, she told the father, Daddy, I won't do anything. Because the father said, Manawand, if you want to see the fire, the fact that you've come back from the dead, everything that you want, I'm going to do it for you. So she said, Daddy, the only thing I want from you is to take me to Edgar Lungo. If you can only take me to Edgar Lungo, Edgar Lungo, then I think my dream will come true. Yeah, so, so like, <laughs> what, what was so special about her meeting Edgar Lungo? Because she would have said a lot of things. She would have said the car and look, uh, looking at the fact that she was, in, she was 15, mm -hmm. she, she would have said, I want a scholarship to UK or USA or something. Like that. Exactly, yes. because, because for her, she wanted to say Edgar Lungo because for her, what was important is not all these things. Like, and everyone was expecting that. Yeah. Everyone was disappointed, like, what? But come on, now. You said that people were talking like. Yeah. But she was like, I don't care. I don't care, okay? I don't care. Oh, I want daddy. Are you going to take me to Edgar Lungo or not? Tell me. If you don't want to take me to Edgar Lungo, then tell me, okay? I don't care about this. Say, okay, okay, daughter, it's just okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take to Edgar Lungo, okay? Now the father was surprised because. He doesn't know Edgar Lungu. He doesn't know where to start from. How are you just going to say Edgar Lungu? See, you get a point. So now from there, if you read the story, it's, it's kind of interesting. There are a lot of things that are just very interesting. Very interesting that's, that's things, and, and, and you, you wouldn't want to put this book down. Like, you know, I, I, I was, somebody bought the book from Australia, and she wrote me a, you know, a testimony and, and how she just learned the book. She told me that, you know what? The first time I picked this book, I didn't put it down. Like, I was just going, I wanted to see what was, <laughs> where this is going, <laughs> you get a point. So it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting book, and uh, the story just make you just think beyond, you know, if you just look at the passion of this young girl, you know, the passion to learn. For her, she was like, what is important to me is not the money. What's important to me is to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm young, 
I'm determined. What is important to me is to learn. Because when I learn leadership, all these things will just come. What does the Bible say? The Bible say in Matthew chapter 66 verse, uh, is it uh, 33 verse 6? Mm-hmm. Where it says, seek first yeah, yeah. the kingdom of God and everything that you need, you desire, will be added to you. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's where, I think this book will be, that's, that's what the book is, is all about. You see, if we seek first the knowledge, we seek first the wisdom. Solomon is saying, with all thy understanding, seek wisdom. With all thy understanding, seek wisdom. Seek wisdom like it's a hidden treasure. But we don't want to seek that. So, so this young girl, she realized that I'm young. If my, my daddy buy me a Benz, what is it? If my daddy buy me pizza, get <laughs> a point. So she decided to be different in a certain way that, you know, you know. Why did I pick? People ask me, but why did you pick a young girl? Why did you pick somebody, maybe a guy or what? I said, no. Children, I love children so much. Why? Because children are fearless. Children are passionate and determined. They want to get what they want to get. The problem is that when we are born, we are born fearless beings. We are not taught to, 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 to fear. But as we start growing up, fear begins to creep in. We start looking at things that, I can't do this. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to create things in my mind. Like, okay, I can do this. You know, at some point, I was, I was thinking I wanted to create Indeke. I wanted to create Indeke when I was a little boy. I wanted to make another Indeke, you get the point? <laughs> Which would become another Indeke. Like, I was thinking like, you didn't decay, yeah? You didn't decay, you didn't decay, you didn't decay, you didn't decay, you get the point? Like, you didn't decay, you didn't decay, you didn't decay, you didn't decay. Like, that's what I was thinking. And it was real. <laughs> yeah. But when I started growing up, fear, impossibility, we were told, no, that is not possible. And, and we have heard of these dreams. I want to become a What do you want to become? I want to become a pilot. If you ask most of them, are they pilot today? No, because when they were growing up, they were told that you can become a pilot. One, you need a lot of money. You need to do what? You, so we are told all these things. And one thing I'm trying to communicate in this book, I want to see Edgar Lungu, is fearlessness, determination, and passion for wisdom. Because you will never become a leader. You will never emerge victorious in this life if you had wisdom. Okay, so uh, like, wha- what kind of impact that do you want your books to have? <coughs> um, generally, uh, because I, 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 I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing, okay? So like I said, my messages are three. I'm communicating gr- gratitude, forgiveness, and love. One thing that I want people to remember, if they pick any of my book, okay, maybe they pick Take Me to Labor Ward, Blood in Room 3, you know, all those titles, okay. So, <laughs> who raped that mosquito, you know, all those titles. So, one thing I want them to remember is that they should live a loving and forgiving life. You see, so I, was, I, 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 I went to prison, I went to see this, this, this friend of mine, he's, he's in jail, and I just went there. I, 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 you know, sometimes it's very important just to go and listen to these people. Like, I know because they are criminals and we just want to say, I, I took time because I love listening to people's stories. So I went to him and I started listening to him, his story. He told me something that just changed my life. He said, Edmund, sometimes, you know, making crimes is not that we don't miss it. I said, then what, what makes you commit a crime? He said, we commit crimes because we don't feel forgiven. Mm. Now, now, I started thinking about that. Yeah, how? I, like, I, I asked him a question. Why do you guys commit crimes? Why do you... Why do you commit crimes? Why do you He told me, no, it's not that a tumfua. The problem is that we feel like we're not forgiven. Okay, so now how can you define <laughs> forgiveness in a sentence? Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, no, I started thinking about that. That's so deep. That's that's really deep. Like, you, so you're committing a crime, like because you're not forgiving. Like how? It's not making sense to me. You get the point. I I I I went home thinking about that, and I just had another revelation of what forgiveness is. Mm. You know, forgiveness is to me is an assurance of love. And what is love in this <laughs> <laughs> Okay, forgiveness is an assurance of love. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a story. Okay, this story is something that happened in my own family. Okay. 
okay? Because I, I talk about my family most of the time because I want people to look at me, like I, I'm not just <laughs> fabricating stories of, of everything like that, okay? Um, there's an uncle of mine, okay? He was sexually abused when he was younger. You get a point? He was actually molested by, 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 by his auntie. When he was when he was a little boy, so like the aunt used to, you know, trying to, you know, you get a point, sexually abusing him. So when he was growing up, he, he felt like he was growing up with that anger, feeling like somebody owes him an apology. <laughs> like somebody needs to apologize to him, but there's no one who's apologizing to him. So that anger started building up, and, and it's very interesting to notice that these little things like sexual abuse, violence, they can grow to such to such length. That they begin to cause people. He said, that made me to start a business. He's in jail today. Do you know why he's in jail? Because he actually fouled three girls. Mm. Three girls. Because mm. I said, man, dude, like, oh. <laughs> like, how do you just do that? Like, he told yeah. me, it's not that I did that deliberately because of what I went through. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? This is why, to me, I'm so passionate about young children because young children, MT Kula. So if if we can't invest and teach the children the way to go, then we are killing the future. We are killing the destiny of these young people. You know. So, uh, just just the last question. Uh, mm -hmm. In in twenty seconds, when when you meet the, the president, then what's next now? You learn. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's all. So you learn. <laughs> <laughs> you learn because you see, to me, I, th I think this is something that has helped me personally. You know everything I, I I have now, where I am now today, is because of of deciding to be humble and also learn from people who've gone ahead. You know, I, I think it's a lot. It's the fastest way to success. <laughs> Learning is a is the surest and fastest way. If you want to succeed faster and move forward faster, learn from people who've gone ahead. Because the chances are that whatever you want to do, the somebody who's done it before. So if you can ride on the shoulders of people who've gone ahead then you get it faster. Because you avoid going through all the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Like, who would want his child or daughter to go through what they went through? I mean, I want my children to have a better life than I had, right? So, right. Thank you so much for, for coming yeah. to the show. Thanks uh, very much. It's that time where we say our, our Baba is, but before we do that, if you want to find uh, Edmond's Chronic Billions book, it's actually on Amazon. You can just type Edmond Chronic Billion, then they are going to bring the, the number of books that he has done. Or you can check him out on Facebook on Edmond Chronic Billion. It's the time that we say bye bye. See you next week. At Manzi Valley, we pride ourselves in giving you the cleanest and safest mineral water on the Zambian market. Our mineral water is produced in the cleanest and most hygienic, germ-free environment in Zambia. And that's just a fact. We at Natural Valley take pride in the quality of our product so that you can safely enjoy our mineral water, rich in minerals, to satisfy that thirst and revitalize your body. So grab a bottle of Manzi Valley Mineral Water now to beat that thirst with the cleanest bottled water in Zambia.